Welcome to a video tutorial that will introduce the acid-base chemistry of amines and um, especially how it's related to water solubility. Let's get started. Alrighty, now amines are proton acceptors and so that's a base and particularly they're weak bases. So we'll draw a generic structure for an amine and we'll just do a primary amine to keep things simple and then we will react that with an acid such as hydrochloric acid and because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid we will show a complete reaction arrow so if we think about our understanding of electronegativity and polarity we know that there's a partial positive and a partial negative here and we have some lone pair electrons so electrostatically even though this is neutral, the negative charge of those electrons is attracted to the positive charge of the hydrogen ion. And hydrogen can only form one bond. And chlorine is electronegative, so we get this a reaction occurring. So you're not responsible for this reaction, but I think it helps with the um, understanding why things are going on. So now I'll redraw the so now I'll draw the product. And so I'm going to leave this part the same, right? and then this lone pair is what creates the bond to the hydrogen atom. Now our nitrogen is no longer in its neutral bonding pattern, so it will have a positive charge. And the two electrons here are now um, alone or completely with the chloride. There's another way to draw this. So I did this to help you see what's going on in the reaction. And we could simplify this and put all of the hydrogens together with the positive charge. And then there's the chloride. So this um, is very important here. We describe this as an ammonium salt. Right? So it's a more complicated ionic compound because we can have a large complex R group, but it's still fundamentally a cation and an anion. And so these salts of amines, these are very important because um, the R groups can be very large, right? So if we have a large R group, right, then the amine will be water insoluble. Right? And it does, right? No water, right? No water solubility are very low. So just like we saw in the carboxylic acid tutorial, if you have if you watched that one already, the salts of amine are water soluble. Right? It's the power of charge. Having that full positive charge can overcome the hydrophobic qualities of the large R group. So the salts of amine are water soluble. It's the power of charge. Okay, so for amines in particular, this is a very important thing. Right? So we can go from an insoluble, a water insoluble amine to a water soluble ammonium salt. And um, many drugs are, um, and are amines and there's a ton of biologically active compounds that are amines. But they tend to have large R groups and so they're water insoluble. Okay, so, um, so we want to make these amines into the ammonium salts. There are several reasons for this. The first one I've already mentioned. We want to create something that's water soluble so we can put it in a syrup to drink or inject it or put it in an IV. Another thing is that amines are very unstable and they're prone to decomposition. So the ammonium salts are much more stable, stable. And last but not least, amines tend to be very stinky and have like a rotten fish odor. And so when we make them into the salt, the odor goes away. 
So let's look at an example of how we could use the acid-base chemistry. So here is a molecule of ephedrine. And then we're going to react it with hydrochloric acid. And so here is the ammonium salt. And so we, the name for the ammonium salt would be ephedrine hydrochloride. So um, we'll learn as we go on that um, a variety of acids could be used to create the ammonium salt. And so we let everybody know which acid we used. Now my software here is a little funky, so this bond got erased, but nitrogen has the four bonds and that's why it has the positive charge and this is our ammonium salt. So why is this chemistry so important? Well, let's look at the, at the criteria. When we have ephedrine, um, and we would describe this as the, we would call this the free base. Right, so the free base of ephedrine versus the ammonium salt. Okay, so the free base has a melting point of only 79 degrees C. So it's very fragile because this is a, a covalent, a molecular compound. Even though we have a lot of organic um, character here, it's, it's still a salt, an ionic compound, and we know that ionic compounds have much higher melting points. So this helps to create more stability and less decomposition. Um, the free base of ephedrine is very foul smelling. The common name of amines are like putrescine and cadaverine. If you've ever smell, um, smelled rotting meat, you are smelling amines. Um, the ammonium salt has no odor. Okay, so in addition to having a very low melting point, it's also chemically unstable versus the ammonium salt, which is very stable. And most importantly, that ephedrine has very low water solubility, right? Right below therapeutic help or below biological activity. Whereas the ammonium salt is completely soluble in water. So that's what helps us to be able to use these amines, which are very biologically active in um, medicines. So now let's um, practice a bit more on this important acid-base chemistry. So we'll go to the next page. All right, so in this first example, we will just show amines with water. So here we have a weak base and a weak acid, so we'll use our equilibrium arrow. And remember the bonding pattern of nitrogen, wanting three bonds and a lone pair. And I'll go ahead and draw the water molecule out. So remembering it, that it's this lone pair on the nitrogen that creates its basic chemistry. And so we would end up with our methyl group, NH3 with a plus, and then here we would have hydroxide as the counter ion. And this can help us see why amines are weak bases, because when we think about bases, we think about hydroxide. This next example, this is nicotine. And so there's our nitrogen. We will add the lone pairs. And I think it's helpful to show the bond here. And recognizing, right, that we have, once again, we have polar compound. And so those lone pairs on the nitrogen are attracted to the partial positive charge. I didn't show it on the water up here, but we'll just fill that in to be complete. All righty. So very, notice the similar pattern of reactivity. And the R groups, you can see why, oh, it's really nice when we can just, um, just put an R there and not have to draw all these carbons. But in this case, we'll show it. 
And so there we have, we have the ammonium salt. So here we definitely have our ammonium salt. So this is nicotine. And this would be described as nicotine hydrochloride. All right, one last example to give you confidence when doing your homework. We'll go ahead and draw out HCl again and recognizing its polarity. And there's of the lone pairs. Now remember that, right, so alcohols are not acids or bases. So don't let that confuse us. We're focusing on amines. That lone pair on the nitrogen right, comes and, re and reacts and forms a bond with hydrogen. Right? If you're wondering, though, maybe you're wondering, like, but there's lone pairs on the oxygen. Why don't they react? Let's remember our electronegativity. Who's more electronegative, right? Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, right? Electronegativity is electron greed. So oxygen is too greedy, right? Too electronegative, right? So the lone pairs on the oxygen, oxygen's not willing to share. But because nitrogen is less electronegative, these lone pairs have the freedom to go out and participate in an acid-base reaction. So now we'll draw our ammonium salt like we have for the other examples. And so there was the original hydrogen, and now we would have the, um, the hydrogen that's connected through the reaction with the lone pair. And there we go. So once again, we would have our amine, in this case, was this what kind of amine is this? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Right? This would be a secondary amine. And this would be our ammonium salt. And then recognizing that over here, these would be water insoluble. But once we've made the hydrochloride salt, they're now water soluble. Alrighty, so that concludes our um, tutorial on um, amines and their acid base chemistry, especially how it's related to water solubility. Please take some time to work a few practice problems to reinforce your understanding of this important chemistry.